Hello everyone and welcome to this video about Rx Swift. Today I want to show you how to test an operator with the test scheduler. This is gonna be mainly about Rx Swift, but it's also applicable to other variants and other languages with Rx. To start with, we need to download with your favorite package manager Rx Swift itself and Rx test for the tests. I'm also including Rx blocking and Rx coco juice because that's what we usually do, but it's not necessary at all. Rx test is the only thing you need. What I'm gonna test today is this small extension that I was working on the other day. The goal of this extension of this new operator is to improve the retry operator. And I know there are some Rx extensions repo with more versions of this retry, but none of them had the requirement that I wanted, which is basically this predicate. So the idea of this predicate is that the retry will only happen for specific errors that we actually want to retry. The idea is that, for example, when you're doing an uh, API request, if you know that the error is about some JSON decoding, for example, there is no point on retrying because the JSON is going to be broken no matter how many times you try. If the API backend and the, and the parsing on the front end, it's different for some reason, waiting a couple of seconds to try again won't change anything. So the idea here is that I wanted the capability to retry easily with a max number of attempts, but specifically only retry the errors that could be caused by the network connection and not because the parsing was broken. When I had this implemented, obviously the easiest way to try this was with tests, but not only that, but after making the PR, one of my colleagues told me it wouldn't be cool if the retry happened after a delay. And that was an idea I already had in mind to implement because obviously it's what the others extensions do, but I don't have time to be honest, but having the test in place, it was really easy to include this delay parameter and change the implementation to support that. So the implementation itself is not a big deal. The, what matters is that you understand the purpose of it. So now on the test, you, you understand what we are testing. So now we're gonna go over the test and what I'm gonna be focusing on us is on the two methods, the create cold observable and the create hot observable and explain the differences between them. And I guess before going there, we need to make sure that you understand what a cold versus a hot observable is. And that's one, one of my biggest complaints about the Rx Swift, I guess, community. And is that they don't treat this as an important fact, even in like the books and literature, like what everyone reads. They just mention it, but honestly, like this is the first thing we should explain because it changes so much the behavior of an observable. It changes it so much that other implementations like Reactive Coco have different types for it. So to understand this is basically a cold observable. It's that one that produces a side effect when you subscribe on. In other words, means that the observable itself is not doing anything until you subscribe. Think of about like your typical API request. Like you can create the observable, but until you subscribe to it, the API request is not gonna be executed. The important thing is that if you subscribe more than once, that side effect is performed more than once. Which means that if you subscribe two times to a cold observable, for an API request, you're gonna be making more than one API request. The opposite is the hot observable, which basically means it's hot because it never stops, it's always live. Think of it as, for example, the positions of the, of the cursor, of your mouse. If you think that you have an observable that tracks the X and Y position of the, of the mouse, doesn't matter if you are listening for it, if you are subscribed to it, or if you are not, those coordinates are going to be changing as the user moves the mouse. It doesn't matter if somebody's listening or not. And the fact of subscribing is not going to do anything. It's not going to perform any side effect. It's not going to move the mouse for you. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So this is the difference. Another thing that you have to be aware of is the importance of testing the subscriptions and disposables themselves and not only the events. Because the majority of tests 
that you can see on RX are about the events themselves, but the subscription is something that is also really important to test. And this case is a really good example of it. Let's start. I basically defined an enum with two cases, basically to have two different errors. One of them is the one I care about, the other I don't care. So we are going to retry one and not the other. In this, in this function, I just extracted the, the predicate that says that you only you need only to retry the second error, the first one you don't need to. So this first test, we are going to comment it a little more in deep because the rest are pretty much the same with some differences. But because the, this is the first one, we are going to go a little more deep. The first thing you need to do is create the test scheduler. The test scheduler, you need to pass an initial clock, which usually you just pass the zero time. The way to think about the test scheduler is that it allows you to control time, at least the time that the Rx stream follows. It basically means that you can be like a time lord. The idea here is that you are gonna be saying at which point in time the events are happening and then the operator we are testing is gonna behave accordingly to the rules. And finally, we are expecting some events to be received at the end of the chain and we can assert that those events are the ones we're expecting. To create the stream of events with a fake time, what we can do is we can ask the scheduler to create a code observable for us, and what we pass there is an array of events. The first argument is always the time at which you can, you can think of it for simplicity as the seconds that have, have passed, but obviously they are not seconds, it's like fake time that it's just going to be run super faster. You can think of it like it's just running in a loop. The whole test is a synchronous test. So the first test we are doing here is to retry when succeeds. So what I do is I create a cult observable and I decided to create a cult observable to basically simulate what an API request will do, which is basically until somebody subscribes it won't do anything, so that's why I'm doing a cold observable here. So I, I'm saying that after the subscription, because these times that you pass here are relative to the observable you are creating, when you create a cold observable, these times are relative to the subscription time, but later when we create a hot observable, those times are absolute, basically being relative to the initial clock time that you pass here. In this case, I just say, well, after one unit of time, let's say after one second, you receive the next event, and immediately after you receive the completed event, which is what a network request will do. In this case, the value that we are returning is just an integer for simplicity. And once you have this, you have set up the test scheduler and you have now an original observable. This is the original observable that you are gonna be attaching more and chaining more operators to create the behavior you want and the behavior you want to test. To do this, you need to call scheduler start. And in here, you need to return the new observable that you want to test. Basically here, you need to create all the chain that you want to make sure it works. In this case, the chain is really simple. It's just using the retry operator that I want to test. So what I do is I grab the original observable, the one that has all this fake time chaining my retry operation after it and returning that. And that's the result that we are going to be testing. I'm defining what the correct events I want, I'm expecting to receive from the resulting operator, not from the original, but from the resulting one. The other important thing about this start is to understand that it has some specific times when it does things by default. At time 100, it runs this code. At time 200, it subscribes to the observable that you are returning here, and by default, at time 1000, it disposes from it. This is important because you need to know these times in order to expect the correct events at the correct time. In this case, the event that we're expecting is an X event and a completed event, which is basically what the original observable is doing, but you see here how it's relevant the, to understand the default times, because what we're expecting is an X event at the time 201, because the subscription happens at the time 200, and one unit of time after that, we call on next, and then we call on completed. So what we're expecting here is the original times plus the time difference between the subscription. And as I was saying before, the subscriptions are really important, specifically for this case. You want to test, when the subscription happens and when the, and when the disposal happens. 
For example, in this case, imagine that, that this 202 was failing for some reason. It will mean that our operator somehow was keeping alive the observer itself. And it wouldn't make any sense. So that's what you actually want to test. So you don't only care about the events, you also care about the subscriptions and the disposals. Finally, when we have the expected outcome set up, we just assert that the events and the subscriptions are what we expect. We do this thanks to these extensions on the on the testable observables. We see that this is a specific type of observable that keeps track of the events that it's receiving and the subscriptions and disposals. And that allows us to just test it easily after the fact. Moving on to the next test. In this one, I'm actually testing the an error that it's not much, doesn't get retried. The idea is the same, um, but in this case, I'm just returning from the original called observable. I'm just returning an error, an error which is the first error, which is remember that is the one that we don't care about and is the one that we are ignoring. It's interesting to see how the correct messages in this case the compiler basically forces me to define the type of this array mainly, and it's something that it's quite annoying with Swift enums, but because one of the cases of the enum doesn't have the, the generic type, the compiler cannot infer which type it is. So basically, one way of fixing it is you are just you just need to define the the type itself of the variable and then the compiler can know, can understand that this is an event of int but that's just an aside we do the same thing here with the subscriptions and we just assert the results there is nothing more interesting happening here we already seen how the other works in this one things get more interesting because here we're actually trying the retry which is the functionality we are we are interested in here i'm trying that the retry stops after the maximum number of retries I gave. So in this case, the error that is happening is the error second, the second error, which is actually the one I I, I interpret like as a network connection error. So I'm interested in retrying to see if the network comes back. And again, I'm saying to retry three times. So the interesting bit here is you need to understand that the, the correct messages, the expected messages are the expected messages that you receive at the end of your chain from this result observable. That means that you only expect one error because any observable it's gonna only be it's gonna be on any observable is only gonna receive one error. And after that, that's it. So even if we are retrying and we are receiving actually two, three, four errors, it doesn't matter. At, at the end of the chain, you only care about and you are only going to be receiving one error. The important part here is the subscriptions, because with this, we cannot actually know Well, at the end we receive an error, but we don't even know if there was a retry, two retries, how many retries, we don't really know. We just know that, well, it finished with an error. So the important bit here is the subscriptions. So what we need to know is that the subscriptions happen at the 200 time, which is the default of the start, that it finishes immediately after one unit of time because the error happens one unit after the subscription, and then the retry kicks in. We retry again, and it errors again. We retry again, and it errors again, and finally we retry again, it errors again, but because we already retried the maximum number of times allowed, we just forward the error to the, to the rest of the chain. As you can see here, the, the times of the subscriptions are the really important bit that you need to test in this case, because otherwise with the events, you don't see the behavior happening correctly. The next one is also an interesting test to talk about, because in this case, we are forced to use hot observables. What we want to make sure is that an error happens once and then we retry and we actually receive a, su a success response after that. So we want to try the happy case that we're expecting to receive in production, basically. That when there is an error, we try again and now the error doesn't happen. To try this, we cannot use a cold observable anymore because it's a cold observable every time a retry happens, a subscription will happen. So it will start from the beginning all the time and we will basically never see this next event. That's why we need to do a hot observable. And when you're doing a hot observable, as I said before, the time is not relative to the start of the subscription, but it's an absolute time. Because we're using the retry and a new subscription is happening all the time. You are kind of reviving this observable, but at the specific absolute time. 
so it doesn't come back to the error. As you can see here, the correct messages we are, we are expecting to have is an X uncompleted, this time at the time 400, because it's the one we have defined here. As before, the expected events are the expected events that come from the resultant observable, not from the original one. Like we are not expecting to receive here an error, we are expecting to receive our actual data and the finish of and the completed event, and that's it. But again, what we want to make sure here is that the subscription and the read and the second subscription after the retry happens correctly. So that's what we are doing here. We subscribe at time 200 because it's the default, and there is an error at 201, so the, the this post happens. Then immediately the retry kicks in again, and we subscribe at the time 201. But look at this, the subscription happens at 201, but the next event happens at 400. Imagine that there is like a super delay in the network and you spend like 200 seconds waiting. But it works, that's what we're expecting to have. We're subscribing at 201 and we're completing and disposing at 401. So that's exactly what we're expecting and we can assert that it works. And the final example is actually testing the delay which is the feature that was added after the fact. In this case, obviously, because we want to have delays, we are, again, forced to use a hot observable. But in, the, in this example, it's even more interesting because we are using the hot observable and the timings in a really interesting way. As before, we are retrying with a maximum number of attempts, but also this time we add a delay, a fixed delay, after each attempt. We are expecting the, the error message to, have a, to happen at a specific time and the completed. The subscription is what is going to help us test the behavior that we want. So let's take a look at the events that we are going to send originally. So we have an error at 201, one second after the subscription happens, and then we have another error at 206. If you do the math, this 206 happens after this error, the subscription and the delay is added, which means that we are actually expecting to see this error fail like here. The second error happens only two seconds after this one, which means that it's it's going to happen before the delay kicks in, so it's going to happen before the subscription. It means that the, this error is not received at all for the resultant observable, and the resultant observable just receives directly the next uncompleted. That's why we don't receive three retries, but only two. And that's it. These are all the tests that I wanted to show you. Uh, there may be more tests, but I think the interesting ones are things like seeing how you can play with time to simulate like misses on the on the retry, how you can use hot observables to actually send next events after an error happened, which is something that you usually don't see in real life code. But for the rest, I think that you need to understand that code observable is probably the easiest way to do the test because you just have like relative times and you don't have to do much math calculating the times themselves. So it's much nicer. And that's it for today. I hope that now you have a better idea of how to use the test scheduler and what matters, the different use cases for the different types of observables. And I think it's really important to understand how it works and how powerful it is. So that's it for today. I hope you like this video. See you next time.